Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Liberals infuriated as Trump drops the hammer on welfare and gives deadline. President Donald Trump rolled out a new plan to make America great again. He set a deadline for federal agencies. This deadline might decide the fate of one of the country's most hated practices. Most patriots despise government handouts. Even many of the people on government handouts don't like them. The incredibly expensive programs were supposed to help people, on a limited basis, but millions of Americans are hooked. They get on programs like welfare and never get off. It has resulted in a welfare state. A large portion of our population is dependent on the government for food, housing, and other necessities. Instead of earning these things themselves, through a good-paying job, they are little more than subjects of an all-powerful government. Americans stuck on welfare aren't enjoying prosperity. They surely aren't living the American dream. When Donald Trump took office, he promised to empower all Americans. He wants everyone to have the chance at a good-paying job. That's why one of the first things he did was slash government regulation. He fought to end TPP and renegotiate NAFTA, trade deals that harmed American jobs. Perhaps his biggest win was the GOP tax cuts, which has raised wages and increased employment. Now, he's set his sights on the welfare state. Trump is not satisfied with the way things are. There are an estimated 6 million job openings across the country. These are jobs that aren't being filled. Millions more are relying on government handouts, instead of finding good employment, but things might be changing very soon. Trump has set a deadline for federal agencies. They must submit a revised plan for welfare programs in the next 90 days. That could mean big changes to how the government hands out money. As part of its all-out effort to rein in the welfare state, the Trump administration is requiring all federal agencies to submit plans for revising welfare programs over the next 90 days. Every year, it costs more and more money to take care of the same number of people, Ben Carson, told Washington's WMAL radio on Thursday. We want to absolutely protect the elderly and the disabled, but for the workable people, we're providing opportunities for the landlords, the public housing authorities, to have a series of choices that they can utilize, he said. Carson believes that will simplify the mind-numbing complexity of the applications, as well as incentivize tenants, who are often dissuaded from working by the yearly escalation in rent contribution that a pay increase entails, to seek higher-paying jobs. Now they can go out and get a job and make lots of money. You're not charged anymore for a three-year period, he said. During that time they might begin to understand, you know what? I can take control here. Source, Fox News. For years, government programs have made it harder for Americans to get out of poverty. People get into a program because they are in need. These programs often reward people who are earning less. The unintended result is that many deliberately stay out of work, or earn low wages, to keep collecting government checks. You might be able to argue that was the plan all along. These programs were originally designed by Democrats, who wanted to exploit the working class and poor. They created these programs, pretending they will help these groups. All the while knowing it makes them dependent on big government to sustain them. That's the opposite of the American way, where every individual deserves to live free of government control. Naturally, this move to cut down on the welfare state has the left outraged. But opponents are infuriated that those receiving housing public assistance would also be required to spend 5% more of their monthly gross income on rent, that deductions for some child care and medical costs would be eliminated, and that caps for the neediest able bodied would jump from $50 to $150 a month. Rebecca Vallas of the Center for American Progress believes the proposed changes are cruel, given the ever increasing costs of living in the United States. Nowhere in the United States, in no state in this country, can a worker earning a federal minimum wage of $7.25 an hour afford a one-bedroom apartment at market rates, she told Fox News. Source, Fox News. Don't be fooled of their talk of cruelty. These elitists don't know what it's like to live in poverty. The people they claim to care about struggle just to make ends meet. Most of them hate having to collect meager support from the government. Steps by the Trump administration to get them off the government's teat would mean a world of good. Keeping them in this toxic situation is cruel and unusual punishment. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.